Okay, in this video, we are gonna talk about sequences on the calculator page. So there's two ways we can deal with this. So uh, the first one, if I press menu, um, this is not how I usually do this. Usually I actually just type it in. Um, go to statistics, go to list operations, and scroll down to number five. Um, so I don't have that sequence of buttons memorized because I don't use it very often. Um, I can pick sequence. And then this, uh, you can type in, so I usually use N um, as the variable in my sequence. So I'm gonna type in a formula that generates the terms of the sequence. So maybe like three N plus two. And then I need to tell this thing, like what is the variable in that formula? So the variable is N. And then I tell it where I wanna start. I'm gonna start at N equals zero, uh, one, I guess. And then where I wanna stop. So maybe I'll stop at five. And I'll press enter and it's gonna, what it'll do, it'll take N equals one, plug it into three N plus two, get a value. Uh, it'll add one, so now it's at n equals two. Take that, plug it in, do three times that plus two, add one, plug it in, add one, plug it in, add one, plug it in. Uh, so we get this. So five is the result of plugging one into the formula, eight is the result of plugging two, 17 is the result of plugging five into the formula. So that's good, and I use that a lot, um, especially when I'm evaluating something. So if I had a function like uh, x squared, and I wanted to evaluate it at a lot of points, I would do uh, such that, so control equals, so such that x equals, and then I usually type this, so seq, and maybe I just want to evaluate it at um, like, uh, I'll use t this time, t, where t is the variable, and I want to go from one to five. And so it takes, uh, it sets x equal to each value in that sequence. So the sequence is just one, two, three, four, five, Sets x equal to those, plugs it in, squares them, and gives you that result. Okay, so that's what you can do with that. I use that almost all the time. But there's a more kind of advanced sequence function built in, and the way I'm gonna to get to it is I'm gonna press the catalog button. So that's down here underneath delete. Press that, I'm on tab one. If you're not on tab one, it'll look a little different. So like if I press the number two on the keyboard, it takes me here. If I press three, four, five, and then six is like user defined. I think uh, you don't have three if you don't have a cast, but I'm not actually sure about that. Um, but I need to be on tab one. So I'm gonna go one. I'm gonna press uh, S on the keyboard, the actual letter like down here. So S and then just scroll down. And okay, so here's the thing I've been using. So sequence, expression, the variable in the expression, uh, the low number, which is your start and the high number, which is your stop. By default, it counts by ones, but you could actually change that and have it count by like 0.5s or whatever you want. Let me show you that really quickly. Um, so SEQ, uh, I wanna do, let's just do T comma T comma. I'm gonna start at uh, zero, end at five, but look, let's count by one halves this time, so 0.5. And so it goes zero, 0.5, one, 1 1.5, two, and it's counting by 0.5, so it has that optional argument. Okay, back to the catalog. And the next thing is this. It's SEQ and then N. So uh, I don't know, se sequence, I don't know what that N is for. Um, so here it's, it's definitely got more arguments. So we have expression U comma N, so that's a little confusing. And then like a lot of optional arguments, uh, list of initial terms, N max, uh, ceiling value. And let's see what it says down here. Uh, oh, it doesn't say anything down here. You could also just enter an expression of n with an n max and a ceiling value. So let's try to use this and see what happens. Okay, so it's seq n. Uh, 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 there, okay, seq n. All right, so I'm gonna feed it. Well, let's just do something like what we've been doing. So uh, 3n plus two. And then uh, let's say five. So I'm not telling it the variable uh, and it just understands this time. So I didn't have to tell it uh, that n was a variable. I didn't tell it to start at one. It knew to start at one. Um, so that's kind of different, uh, but that's not why I would use this. So why I would actually use this is suppose we have something that's gonna be uh, recursively defined, right? So um, maybe what I need to do is take a previous term. So let's say that I want to generate, let's delete this, I'm gonna do u of uh, n minus one, that's the previous term, plus u of n minus two. Okay, 
So uh, this will generate a Fibonacci-like sequence. And if I seed it with one and one, it'll generate the Fibonacci sequence. So comma, now what I'm gonna do is uh, control and then close parentheses to get the braces. I'm gonna do one comma one. So those are my initial values. And then I'm gonna tell it uh, to go up to, uh, let's say six, All right? So it's going to list the first six terms. The first two terms are one and one. That's what's in print the braces here. Press enter. So it does one, one, and then it starts following the rule. So the rule says to take uh, the previous term and the term before that and add them together. So one and one is two. And then to get three, it took the previous term and the term before that. So two and one and added those. And then five is three plus two. Um, so that's kind of interesting. That's definitely working for me. Uh, there's actually another argument. So say I accident, well not accidentally, say I just tell this to go up to uh, 30, right? So it's gonna generate the first 30 terms um, and they get really big. So I'm gonna scroll through a little bit. Uh, you can see they're starting to get pretty big. Okay, so let's say that what I wanted was, uh, I don't exactly know how many terms that I need, but I know that the biggest term that I could possibly want is like, uh, 100. So let me press enter here. And look at that. So if I go back up here, you can see that it did all the terms and then it hit 89 and it just kept on going. Here, it got to 89 and it stopped. The reason that it stopped is because this argument right here, the 100 that I put, is the biggest term that I will accept as an output for this thing. So if I had cut it at 150, so I'm gonna change this from 100 to 150. Now it's including 144. If I make it 250, it will include 233. Let's see what happens if I make it 233. Let's see if it includes 233 or doesn't. So 233, it does include it. So it's uh, the biggest, it's like uh, all terms less than or equal to uh, this threshold that I'm putting in. Um, but this is really useful because it'll let you put in uh, implicitly defined, func uh, not implicit, recursively defined um, sequences. Uh, and I think that's something that people commonly have to do. So I hope you found this helpful and good luck.